What's going on guys? This is Real Deal Fantasy HQ with your boy LQ and this week we are talking about start and sit for week 6. So let's get right into the episode. So we're here into week 6. I can't believe we're already into week 6 though. It's like time's flying. Football's flying, but I'm enjoying my time while we got it with fantasy football. Now we're doing start and sit week six. Now, my first guy I'm going to be talking about is Devontae Freeman. I'm very optimistic about this guy. He had, you know, kind of a slow start coming into last week, but that was expected. Dan Quinn has mentioned that it will be a 40-40-20 cut with the three running backs, so it looked like he was on a pitch count, so I wouldn't really panic right now about Devontae Freeman. He just needs to shake the rust off and, you know, get back into the workload. I'm pretty sure this week with the matchup that he has with the Bucks, that it'll be back to business with Devontae Freeman. So don't panic yet. Devontae Freeman is doing okay. I mean, it's great news that he's not hurt or anything like that. Like, starting guys that are coming off an injury, like I didn't start him last week, that's kind of like a high-risk gamble that you're doing right there, taking the chance that the guy coming off an injury and producing nothing, basically what Devontae Freeman did. Or you can be lucky with a Joe Mixon coming off an injury and him putting up the numbers he put up, but that was expected with Joe Mixon and Devontae Freeman, you know, it was already mentioned with the head coach that it'll be a 40-40-20 cut between the running backs. So Devontae Freeman this week, he's getting the start for me. Carson Wentz. Now the Eagles have lost back to back games and through it all, Carson Wentz has actually looked good and healthy, which is good news for fantasy owners wise. He was putting up twenty eight points back to back games. I know he had that slow start in the beginning, but he still produced some points. It was like 18 points or whatever. But in the last three games, he had 914 yards, five touchdowns in the last three games, which is great numbers for Carson Wentz. So I'm not really too worried about him or disappointed in his fantasy value right now. And he's a week-to-week -week start for me. Start and forget. I mean, the Eagles are looking a little beat up. You know, losing back-to-back -back games, but fantasy-wise, Carson Wentz is still doing his job and still doing what he has to do. So Carson Wentz, you get the start this week against the Giants. Giants are uh, decent right now. I mean, they're the 14th defense, you know, overall ranked, but I'm not too worried about Carson Wentz going into this. Carson Wentz is going to do his damn thing. He might even throw two more touchdowns, so it looks like he's on track to still have that, you know, decent quarterback year for him, but I didn't worry too much about him last week or even a week before that I mean the guy's just coming off an injury so Carson Wentz no worries there no panic there you get the start this week next up Doug Baldwin now he had one target one catch one point last week I don't know what the heck that was about but he didn't see much production last week against the Rams as much as we hoped to. Russell Wilson was not looking his way. He didn't seem like he was hurt or anything like that. So I'm pretty sure the game plan was just to run the ball down the Rams' throat, being that the Rams are struggling right now to stop the run. So I think it was more just of a game plan thing because Russell only throwing the ball 22 times. So it was obvious what was going on with that. So I'm not too worried about Doug Baldwin. I mean, he does have the upside flex this week against Oakland but what's holding me to start him is that he had back-to-back -back games now with underwhelming stats so Doug Baldwin's not really trusted right now so I'm not willing to take that chance this week with Doug Baldwin so Doug Baldwin you get the bench next up you got John Brown now I spoke about this guy plenty of times in plenty of videos that him and Joe Flacco will have something special and it seems to be playing out that way that the chemistry is still building it looks like that John Brown is the leading target on that team for Joe Flacco he had 14 targets last week against Cleveland which is amazing now John Brown is a basically a week-to-week -week starter there he's averaging 13.5 points in PPR formats that's a start for me at flex position wide receiver three every week now he has Tennessee going against him this week will be a tough matchup but I believe him and Joe Flacco will still connect on a lot of targets and a lot of catches and may even see the end zone a couple of times I'm telling you John Brown Joe Flacco is a real deal thing man it's real now John now John Brown 
he's probably sitting on a lot of people benches so if you got guys that you're willing to trade away to get John Brown if you're struggling at flex or at wide receiver or whatever the case may be John Brown is definitely a guy to pick up in PPR formats he's gonna see a high volume of targets every week being that him and Joe Flacco just have something special it's a beautiful marriage there so John Brown you get to start this week next week and a week after that next up we got Philip Lindsay slash Royce Freeman. Now, I love this matchup they got going into this week against the Rams. Rams have been struggling against the run, which we seen that was evident with Chris Carson and Mike Davis getting the ball ran down their throat, play after play. So, Philip Lindsay is definitely a RB2 of flex this week, but with Royce Freeman, on the other hand, it looks like Lindsay's the alpha dog in that running back committee. He outsnapped Royce Freeman last week, 15 to 8. So, it just looks like Lindsay's not slowing down anytime soon, so I know a lot of guys are thinking like, oh, should I start Royce Freeman? Should I start Royce Freeman? I mean, this week, I will probably take the gamble of starting Royce Freeman and any of you or owners that have Phil Lindsay on the other hand, too. Start them both. Now, with the matchup, it looks like that it will be a one-two punch combo with Phil Lindsay and Freeman because we've seen last week with the combo that Chris Carson and Mike Davis has going against the Rams. So, being that Lindsay and Royce Freeman are basically a more talented combo than Seattle has, I would love to see both of them in the starting lineup. I would love to see Royce Freeman in guys flex positions or even RB2 or whatever the case you guys are dealing with with bye weeks. So basically all I'm saying is that Denver running back wise have a good matchup this week. So no worries there. Philip Lindsay, you get the start. Royce Freeman, you also get the start. Uh, next up, Amari Cooper. Jesus Christ, dumpster fire. Trust issues is a understatement with this guy. I know a lot of owners are just done with him. Like, he's he's riding the bench for the rest of the year for some owners. But it's like, I'm never drafting him again to this point where a lot of people are saying, like, just never draft Amari Cooper ever again. It's just been sad for him. It's kind of like, what do you do at this point? But he had one big game. And it's like, what happened after that? Cooper saw one target for one catch for 10 yards for the rest of the game. All four quarters. It was that. That was it. Nothing else. So, it's not really helping his case to be a starter any of the weeks. Being that he has Seattle this week. So, Amari Cooper, you're riding the bench until further notice. Sit. Next up, Jordan Howard for the Bears. I mean, their matchup this week against Miami is a tough defense they're going against, but I know people were thinking about last week, Jordan Howard putting up the numbers he put up wasn't really wowing. It was very underwhelming, but I think more so that was more of a game plan that the Bears were going into that week with, so I don't expect Cohen to get the amount of touches that he had week to week. I mean, he probably won't see that amount, you know, for a very long time, or it'll just be an alternate thing going into the week, whatever the matchup will be. So Jordan Howard, I'm not too worried about. He's bound to have a bounce back this week this week. So he's definitely the goal line, you know, running back there. So I'm not worried about his production. I'm not worried about Cohen going into his touches. So it was just basically a, you know, a game plan thing. They were just going with it. So he wasn't hurt or anything because he was in the second half. He was out there. He just wasn't getting the ball. It was just more so, you know, the Trubisky show and the Cohen show. So. Jordan Howard, no worries there. You're getting a start this week for me. Next up, Demarius Thomas going against the Rams this week. Ah, this guy. Now, I know a lot of people are seeing his stats, and he had three back-to-back -back games, you know, being cold activity, nothing there, and then he has his garbage time, you know, touchdown. He put up 105, and it's like, come on, man. You got to be consistent, and I don't see it being consistent over there in Denver with Demarius Thomas being outplayed by the rookie Sutton and Emmanuel Sanders just running away with this offense and you got to struggle in Case Keenum also so it's really hard to depend on Thomas week after week being you know the clear starter there but I don't want to give up too soon on Thomas but just with this matchup going against the Rams I am not starting Thomas. Thomas going three full weeks you know just being basically underwhelming it's it's alarming at this point I know we're into week six but it's something to worry about and you know you don't want to put him on the starting lineup and then he puts up like four five six points and it's like come on you're supposed to be my wide receiver one my wide receiver two Marius Thomas you get the bench this week against the Rams Josh Gordon going against Kansas City this week 
I'm not too sold on the guy yet, but hear me out. He had two catches for 50 yards, and it was kind of like if he didn't catch that pass from Tom Brady for 34 yards for the touchdown, I mean, his fantasy impact was just irrelevant for the whole game. He, I'm not completely sold on Josh Gordon, basically. You know, without that touchdown, and, and a lot of people would be pissed off that they burned him, starting him. So, Josh Gordon, he's not really a week-to-week -week guy to start yet. We don't even know yet if he fits into that offense. He's only on the field 34% 34, 34 of the time. So it's not much promising opportunity there for him to be a week-to-week -week, you know, starter. And Julian Edelman is back from suspension. So that definitely plays a part where it's like pump the brakes on Josh Gordon because of that. And Gronk's still somewhat healthy or whatever whenever he goes out with his fucking every year injuries. I mean, can this guy finish a full season healthy? No. But anyway, Josh Gordon just, he hasn't shown that he can be consistent, you know, with the offense and be a flex or even a wide receiver two or wide receiver three in some leagues. I know people are just holding on to him, stashing him like, can I start him? Can I start him? But you just got to be patient with Josh Gordon. Hopefully he fits there. Hopefully, you know, we get to see something for these next couple of weeks. I mean, I'm happy he got the touchdown and made him somewhat fantasy relevant, but without that touchdown, it's kind of like he shit the bed. So Josh Gordon get the bench this week, even with a favorable matchup against a terrible Kansas City defense. Now, if you haven't heard the news, which I'm sure you did, Ajayi is out for the rest of the season with a torn ACL for the Eagles. So a lot of people are questioning, should they pick up Smallwood? Should they pick up Clement? Or, you know, who do I start this week? Or whatever the case may be. Now, to answer that question, it's it's really tricky. It's kind of hard because it's kind of like a wait and see right now, being that the Eagles are in talks with David Johnson, LaShawn McCoy. So I don't want to tell guys, you know, this will be that, and then they go and do this. So basically, as of today, being that no moves were made, I'm going to speak on who you should start, who you should pick up. Now, obviously, if you have waiver wire priority one, I'll definitely go with Clement. Now, if you have the opportunity to pick up both of them or you have one stash and you're trying to get the other one, I'll pick up Clement or Smallwood, whatever the case may be. But going into this week starting, it looks like there will be a one-two punch combo, but Clement will definitely probably get more touches being that the coaching staff favored him more even when everybody was healthy. So Clement will definitely be the guy that you, know, you go pick up or start or whatever the case may be. Now Smallwood, he's shifty back. I love what he's doing and when he took that full load that he had to with Clement still dealing with his injuries, Sproles still out with hamstring, and then Ajayi fumbling the ball on the five yard line, like whatever the case may be. So Smallwood and Clement are definitely fantasy relevant right now. So with that being said, if you're one of the teams that haven't had the opportunity to get any of those players and you're sitting stuck like oh who do I pick up if you're absolutely struggling I'll go pick up Ronald Jones now hear me out I know that the Bucks running back situation has been terrible Peyton Barber has been terrible now going in coming out of this bye week maybe the Bucks are looking to change things up now Ronald Jones hasn't really got the complete opportunity I know that his preseason wasn't exactly great but maybe the Bucks are looking to change some things around and then you could pick up Ronald Jones just in case, you know, have him on the stash or whatever the case may be. But another guy also, Marlon Mack, who's coming back from injury, he had enough time to heal up and the Colts right now are like desperate for a run game right now. So he could be the early down back. I mean, Naeem Hines has established himself as the pass back. I mean, the pass catching running back. So Marlon Mack coming into that role, he could definitely run away with the early down plays, you know. Being that, he'll probably see, it's more promising with Marlon Mack than Clement and Smallwood. Being that, you know, they're going to be bouncing off each other. Who should start this week and that week? Who's going to get the touches? But like I said, again, Clement will probably be favored with the coaching staff. Being that, when everybody was healthy, Clement definitely got more touches than Smallwood. So, with that being said, Clement over Smallwood to sum it all up. Cooper Cup and Brandon Cooks, now they're both dealing with concussions. I know... Basically, that it's more likely so that Cooper Cup will probably come back than Brandon Cooks being that this is his second concussion in the last eight months. So it doesn't look like a pretty good sign of Brandon Cook coming back this week. So if you are a Cooks owner and you have some type of space on your team, I would definitely go pick up Josh Reynolds. Now, he's going to be on the field full 
time people now the Rams 97% of the time run 11 personnel which is a three wide receiver set that they always run basically all game he'll be on the field he'll get those opportunities now he had two catches for 39 yards and 10 rushing yards I mean nothing too wowing but he did what he was supposed to do when he got the chance and opportunity. So golf will definitely be looking to Robert Woods as his number one, obviously. But Josh Reynolds will also be on the field as the other option. Now, Cooper Cup, I'm banking on him coming back out of pro call fine. But Brandon Cooks is not looking too good because it's the second one in eight months. So they're going to be more cautious with Brandon Cooks. So Josh Reynolds will definitely be a plug and play into that offense. So he's very productive when he gets the opportunity. So Josh Reynolds should go pick him up. In breaking news, now Jamal Charles has signed with Jacksonville. Now, I know the TJ... Yeldon owners are kind of like, oh, what do we do now? What the hell? Blah, blah, blah. Don't panic. Do not worry. For this week only, do not worry. I can only speak on this week. I don't see Jamal Charles coming into that lineup and making a big splash. We have to remember what he did in Denver with his 69 carries. Nothing. So the TJ Yeldon owners, please just relax. Do not panic. It's just Jamal Charles. I'm not too... Like confident that he'll come in and start shaking shit up. So, TJ Yeldon owners, just sit tight, relax, and just watch the show. TJ Yeldon definitely still gets to start this week, so there's no worries there. So just be on autopilot until we see Jamal Charles produce something and actually shake shit up in the lineup, which I don't see happening this week. So I repeat, do not panic. TJ Yeldon is fine. Now, this rising star for the Houston Texans, Kiki QT, will be seeing the Bills this week, and I'm giving him the start. Only because he's making a name for himself in the NFL right now. Only two games in, and he's making a huge splash. Last week, he had seven targets for six catches, one touchdown, 50 yards. Now, Kiki QT will be definitely a plug and play once, you know, Will Filler decides he doesn't want to be healthy anymore. 88% of the time he's on the field, so that's plenty of opportunity for the kid. 61% of that time is in the slot. So basically, he will be on the field majority of the time, and he will see those targets. He will see an increase once again, Will Fuller expects not to be healthy anymore. Kiki, he's definitely a rising star in that offense, so I'm happy to start him at a flex or a wide receiver three in PPR format. I mean, his volume's only going to increase. The kid can play, so it's been proven. Now, with D-Hop on one side, you got Will Fuller on the other, and then you got Kiki in the slot. It just looks like a beautiful offense for me. It's helping Deshaun Watson, you know, as a quarterback, and it looks like they're trying to build around him. So definitely, it looks like Kiki, you get the start this week. So that wraps up the episode of another great episode of Real Deal Fantasy HQ with your boy LQ. And that was week six, start or sit. Leave a comment below on your start and sit questions. I'll get back to you the best of my abilities. I want you guys to like and subscribe for me. Share the video, share the channel, and I'll see you guys next week for week seven. Peace.